I don't know if you're like me, I find mail merge a little bit limiting, particularly because you can only bring in information from one document into your template and then put that all together and send it out by email. There is another way. For example, if you want to bring in information from two Excel files, three Excel files, one Word document and some Excel files, I'm going to show you how to do that in this video so you can have multiple sources feeding into your email template and being issued automatically. I'll show you a standard mail merge quickly, but if you don't want to see that because you're an expert already in mail merge, I'll put the time code on screen that you can skip to for the Power Automate version. For a standard mail merge, I've got a mail template here. It's just a Word document. I've got some words in it. My intent is to take a piece of data from an Excel spreadsheet and place it here just after that achievement code. The spreadsheet I'm going to use looks like this. I've got an email address in it, I've got some course codes, and I've got the achievement codes and some first and last names. Mail Merge is really easy. You just fire up the desktop version of your Word document and go to Mailings. There's a couple of ways to start your Mail Merge. You can either go through the steps individually, or as I'm going to do, click Step by Step and it will take you through. It asks you questions. I'm going to create some email messages and I'm going to click Next. I'm going to use the current document that's in the screen there. I'm going to select the recipients from a document that I've downloaded. It's actually that course achievement details. I've got it downloaded locally. This is the file here. And it will scan that file, connect to it, and look for the data in that file. And you can validate it here. Once you're happy that that file that's got email addresses in it has been ingested, you can also do a few more steps. So you can write your email address, like I'm doing here, confirming various details, and you can add items from that Excel document. It calls them database fields. I'll just adjust the email now and add in the code from that Excel spreadsheet. I can preview what that's going to look like. You can see here it's taken Hi John and given me the code. Fantastic. I can preview different recipients. When I'm happy, I can complete the merge and send the email, putting a subject in at this point. And you can see there on screen that just cycled through sending those emails through my connected email address. But that might not be enough. In my case, I've got course information over here, which refers to the course code and the course title. I might want to add that to my email. Equally, I might have data in other document sources. I also might want to cut out a few of the manual steps that you just saw, such as downloading these files locally so I can then ingest them into that mail merge. So here's your alternative. Set yourself up a Power Automate flow that looks a bit like this. I've named my merge sources and send email because I know it's quite common that I want to merge information from multiple Excel sources. I could have more than two sources. I could even have different sources. I would just add a few different actions in here and there, but this core structure will stand you in good stead. The first thing to note is I've not set my trigger up yet. You can set this to run when you decide to run it, so a manual trigger, or you could have it running on a schedule. The beauty of what I'm going to show you here is that the files we're going to point it at remain relevant and connected. So we can run this and it will take the latest information present in that file. There's no downloading, no copy pasting. I'll set mine up as a manually run flow using this trigger. And the first action you will notice here, this is from Excel. You'll note in my Excel documents I have tables. That's super important. The second super important thing is these are available on the cloud. These are in my SharePoint document library. They exist over here. This action here is called list rows in a table. I'll show you what that looks like. Excel has a lot of different actions you can choose from. And you'll see the one there that was at the top. It is list rows present in a table. I've used that for both of these because I'm getting data from two different tables in two different documents. And that's where you can get from different documents, different data sources even, if you choose to. But to set these up, I've just changed its name so it's meaningful to me. I pointed at the SharePoint location. I've given it the location, the file name of the files I want to get, and I've given it the table name. If you're connected with the appropriate permissions, you should see the correct tables when you just click in those drop downs. Exactly the same for this one. It's just taking slightly different information from a different Excel file. So what I want to do now is I want to go through and send an email for each record in this table here. I have the email address. I have the course code. I have the person's details. I also have a course code here, 
which what I want to do is look up that code in another spreadsheet, which is over here. Again, another table. I've got a corresponding code and I've got some course details. Just a really simple example. I want to take the course name and I might want to take the date just to make a better form of email. So to do that, we need to decide what our main list that we're going to iterate through looks like. Here, I'm choosing the achievements list in this first action. So this represents the outputs from that first Excel action. And I'm just going to iterate through them. I could just iterate through them and send an email straight away, but I don't want to do that. I want to take a further action to join information to the current information that I have from that table. And I get that from the second table. So here we use a filter array action. You'll find great explanations of a filter array action out there on the internet. But what I've done here is I'm saying for each of those records that I'm going to cycle down on my course achievements, I want you now to have a look into the course details table. So the thing that holds all my course information. And I want you to do a match for me. I want you to match on these course codes. And when you do, I want you to just create a new, a new filtered set of that data. So effectively what I'm saying is find me anything where ABC 900 is present over here and just grab hold of that record. There may be many records, so that's why you'll see the second action where I filtered it down to the first. So I've taken the first of whatever records you return here in the filter array. When I do that, I know I've got hold of some course details from this table for that record there, ABC 900, which for this iteration of the loop refers to the one that John Mandeville took. I now know I've got all the details ready to assemble my email for this person in the loop. So now it's just about assembling the email we want all these people to receive. So again, that's the text from a Word document. If we look into that, you can see I've taken the course details item, which will actually be this one. And last of all, I'm taking the code from the person's record here, the achievement code, that's been stored in memory. And for your information, for me, that would be that one there. And that's it. That email gets sent. So I could structure this however I like, add more or less details into it, but it's all done in one process. The advantage, as I mentioned at the start, is it's all done on current up-to-date information held in the cloud, no copy-paste. If I want to run this manually, I can now. If I want to run it on a occurrence trigger, it'll just run. I'll quickly do a test and show you what it looks like. You can see that's run successfully and it will have issued emails to each of the three email addresses. Now, another beauty of this is when you do a mail merge in Word, you can't see what's happened. When you do a mail merge like this in Power Automate, you can go and have a look at the runs that have succeeded, what's happened, where it's sent to. When you get to know Power Automate a little bit, you can go through each of these flows. And you can have a look at the outputs that have been sent. But an acid test is, have I got an email? Yes, I have. And here it is. This is my information. You completed the course. This is all mail merged. You can play with all of the formatting. You can add more data in, but you get the point. This allows you to combine multiple data sources with a few techniques in Power Automate. I hope that's a good one for you. Do come back for the next video.